All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the Sequential Pro 3 synthesizer and just have a look at the oscillator number three, the digital wavetable oscillator. Uh, so the Pro 3 has three total oscillators. The first two are VCO uh, analog oscillators. The third one is a digital wavetable oscillator uh, that also has uh, virtual analog shapes like the sawtooth, the pulse, and the triangle. Uh, and then it has a sine wave and a super saw emulation as well. Uh, so first we'll just jump in here to the, uh, the virtual analog shapes. Uh, we'll start off with a saw wave here. So this is the digital saw. Um, what I'll do with these two is I'll just compare these to the VCOs uh, so you can get a sense of how the digital oscillator compares to the VCOs. So here's the digital, digital saw. Here's the uh, VCO. So they're uh, almost identical. Um, they're a very good match. Um, if you were to put together some paraphonic patches and you want to try to match the two uh, analog oscillators with the digital oscillator, uh, you can get a very good match with the sawtooth uh, as long as it's in the zero shape mod position. Um, I have set up an envelope here too. Um, just I'll use this for demonstration purposes. Uh, but what it does is it just uh, swings the shape mod from zero all the way up to its maximum setting um, after a short delay. Uh, and so I'll show you also um, what the uh, shape mod variant is on the uh, digital saw here. So you see with the uh, digital saw, it just creates a sort of a multi-saw effect as you uh, do the shape mod. Uh, if you do that on the VCOs, so it's a different effect on the VCOs. It uh, introduces a, uh, a low to medium duty pulse uh, wave into the saw. Uh, so you couldn't get an exact match in say paraphonic mode if you wanted all three of them to be the same. Um, if you're using the shape mod, but for the basic saw shape, you can get pretty much an exact match. Uh, let's jump to the pulse wave next. So this is the digital pulse. And the VCO. Again, they're virtually identical. Um, they would be a fine match for if you're doing a paraphonic mode and want to match the three oscillators. Uh, this one, the shape mod, um, is somewhat closer uh, between the VCOs and the digital one. Uh, so this is the, uh, the first VCO. So you see there as you swing the shape mod on the VCOs. actually goes through the, uh, the full cycle, uh, through the full uh, duty cycle till to get uh, no audio on the uh, VCO ones. Uh, on the digital one, if you do the same thing, so it gets to a buzzy, um, thin pulse there, but it, do it doesn't actually go through zero on the digital oscillator. Uh, so again, they're very similar, um, and you could use paraphonic mode with shape mod on the pulse uh, and get very similar tones. Um, I actually have created a couple of paraphonic patches uh, that sound uh, virtually identical between the three oscillators. It's hard to tell them apart once you get all the filtering and uh, envelope and the other sound design stuff on them. Uh, so that's the uh, saw and the pulse. Let's jump into the triangle next. So here's the digital triangle. Now on this one, you'll notice a, a difference in it here. So the digital triangle has a lot of uh, rounding. As you can see, it's more like a, uh, oh, yeah, that's the shape mod going on there. So the digital triangle is, uh, has got more of a sign shape um, for the digital one on the VCOs. So it's a nice, uh, nice triangle on the VCO. So this one would be harder to match uh, if you're trying to get all three the same in paraphonic mode uh, to get three triangles, um, but uh, you can still pull it off. Um, it's just a little bit different on the digital oscillator. All right, let's jump in here now to the sine wave. So the digital sine wave is a sine, as you would expect. Uh, there are some so you see some of these spikes out here. So there's a little bit of upper harmonic content uh, coming out, uh, but for all intents and purposes, it's a pretty pure sine wave, digital sine wave. Um, this 
probably the most uh, common use I would use this for would be as a sort of sub bass uh, to mix in uh, if you're creating a lead or a bass tone uh, in a higher octave up here on the uh, two VCOs and then just want to fill it out with some extra sub bass. Um, you could use a sine wave uh, one octave beneath uh, whatever else you're doing uh, and get that sort of fat uh, room rumbling tone out of it. Uh, and then the last one here is the super saw emulation. I'm going to turn this off for a second. Okay, so the super saw, as far as I can tell, I, I took screenshots of this and counted the wave peaks. Um, it looks to me to be five separate sawtooths. And they're all detuned, of course, there. Um, what the shape mod does on the super saw is just increases that detuning of these five saws. So as you saw there, as you get up into the high values, it gets uh, quite detuned. So uh, this is a good uh, emulation if you want to create those sort of old school uh, 90s super saw type of tones. Um, I think the old Roland uh, uh, JP uh, super saws maybe had seven saws in them from what I've read. Um, if you wanted to uh, create a seven saw super saw type of thing, you could use the five from the super saw emulation here um, and add in two more uh, uh, analog sawtooths with the, the first two oscillators and you'd have uh, seven saws. Um, I've actually done that on a couple patches and made some pretty huge sounding uh, super saw leads um, and plucks and various other type of sounds like that. <laughs> So that's a nice option. All right, so let's jump in now to the wave tables on the digital oscillator. I'm gonna turn back on this uh, to oscillator three shape mod. Uh, so I'm just using this auxiliary envelope just to, uh, to automatically swing this shape mod up from zero. It, it delays for a second after I hit it, and then it just swings the shape mod up from zero to 255, just so we can uh, see what the effect of the shape mod is on each of the uh, wavetable oscillators. So the first one is called a uh, sequential. Uh, this is the one that they used in their uh, promo materials uh, for the sequential voice. Um, if you want to see this uh, best in action, check out factory patch. Uh, it's in factory bank four, uh, patch number one. There's a good example of this, uh, but this is what the sequential one sounds like. <laughs> So you can hear in there, uh, it has that sort of formant uh, swing where it goes through the sequential sounds of the uh, sequential. Uh, so that one would be good. Um, in this document here, I just marked down some of my initial thoughts as uh, my interpretation of what the sounds in the wavetable are in this uh, column here, and then my initial usage thoughts for uh, what I might personally use these for in my sound designs. So I'd marked down for that one, maybe a voice type of sounds, uh, leads, or uh, possibly percussive type of sounds um, with the right kind of filtering um, and envel snappy envelopes. All right, number two, this one is called a water fawn. So as you hear in there, there's a lot of metallic uh, sort of bell type tones in this one. Uh, I'd marked down as a possibility for pad type of sounds, atmospheric type sounds, um, of course, uh, 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 percussive type of sounds, percussive bell type sounds would be appropriate for this type of uh, tone. Next up, number three. Uh, so in the editor, uh, some of these are misnamed in the editor. Uh, the numbers are mixed up, um, but I will point those out. So this is not actually called square four. It's called quad square. Uh, so they got the, uh, the general idea right on this one. So this is quad square. So this one has sort of a complex uh, multi-pulse type of thing going on. Uh, there's this uh, sort of... Uh, division or folding effect of the oscillator um, what, as you swing through the shape mod, um, which gives you some really cool sort of aggressive sounds. I'd mark down this I might use for lead tones, basses, or pluck type of sounds. All right, number four. This one's called Nasty Wave. So 
this one has a similar type of thing going on where it's doing this uh, this fold divide this uh, wave dividing or wave folding effect. Um, it's similar to the quad square, but even more aggressive uh, for the nasty wave one. Uh, this one I'd mark down as possibly for lead or bass tones. Number five, uh, so this is incorrect in the editor here. Um, what this one is actually called is A E A O. <laughs> So you can hear there it's going through some sort of voice formants. Um, I'd marked down that around zero shape mod, you've got the uh, A sound. Uh, around 72 shape mod is the center of the E sound. Around 128 is the center of the A ah sound. And around 228 is the center of the O oh sound. <laughs> So that's a useful type of wavetable to have um, if you want to model uh, vocal or choir type of sounds, um, or you could uh, layer it with other sounds uh, to create various different uh, type of complex uh, type of tones. Number six. Number six is called draw bars. So this one gives you uh, organ draw bar type of tones. Um, this one, of course, would be great for organ type of sounds, uh, lead sounds, uh, possibly pluck sounds. I thought I would try with this. Uh, number seven, so this one was mixed up. This is not a e a o u. Number seven is called Chebby Shiv. <laughs> This one does a similar type of effect to the quad square and nasty wave where it's doing that, uh, that wave folding or wave dividing. So it sounds to me early on in that there's some uh, sort of formant type sounds that might be appropriate for vocal wah type sounds. Um, toward the middle and end uh, it gets more nasty, um, it gets more thin and buzzy and that might be appropriate for more of a thin lead type sound. All right, number eight. This one is called 808. So this one is one of the more complex uh, wave tables, I think. Um, it seems like there's more sort of keyframes in between where there's uh, significantly different uh, uh, waves in here. Um, I'm guessing by the name 808 that it's probably a reference to the Roland TR-808. Um, and uh, if you stop the uh, shape mod in certain areas in here, you can definitely hear how you could get some uh, hi-hat, uh, kick drum type of tones out of it. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what that's intended to be. Um, and I'd marked it down as possibly good for uh, drum or percussive type sounds. Um, at least that was my interpretation on that one. Number nine. So this is called Mad Ringy. So this one obviously is very uh, ring mod type of sounds, a lot of metallic sounds in there. Um, I'd marked down this would be good for metallic uh, type of hits, uh, retro digital type sounds if you're going for that uh, 80s chip tune type sound um, or pluck type sounds. I could see with this uh, type of sound with the appropriate uh, filtering and envelopes. All right, number 10. Uh, so number 10, this one is incorrect in the editor. This is not fat saw. This one is called Big Steps. So this one again is another one with that sort of wave folding or wave dividing going on as you swing the shape mod. I'd mark this one down as uh, possibly good for percussive bass tones in there, uh, metallic uh, hits, or harsh uh, thin lead type tones. Um, and a lot of these you're going to end up uh, just layering on a little bit of it, a little bit of the level with the VCOs. So. Um, you wouldn't necessarily be just using the digital oscillator most of the time. Um, and that was my interpretation on that one. I would probably use that as a layering type of thing. Okay, number 11 is not actually called low lin as it's currently marked in the Sound Tower editor. Um, I sent them a note about these to uh, fix their index of this. Uh, number 11 is actually bill tree in the unit.
There's a variety of uh, FM frequency modulation style sounds in there and metallic sounds. Uh, I'd mark down, be good for percussive type sounds, uh, bells, and uh, pluck type of sounds. Okay, number 12 is called spindles. This one uh, has a couple different areas of character. The first half of the shape mod swing uh, sounds to me like it has more of a uh, vocal formant, vocal wah type of quality to it. Uh, and then when you get up in the higher shape mods on this one, it gets very aggressive uh, above there. So I'd mark down a possibility for vocal type of sounds, wah type sounds and leads. All right, let's go to number 13. This one's called Primes. Whoa. So that one has um, some hearty FM sign type tones, uh, very high pitched ring modi type sounds and glassy sounds in there. Uh, this would be good for percussive type sounds possibly, uh, definitely for bells and pluck type sounds you could see using this for. Or alien communications perhaps. All right let's go to number 14. This one's called Who Knows. All right so this is another one with some complex uh, wave dividing or wave folding going on. Uh, this one's pretty aggressive throughout the range of shape mod uh, and I'd mark this down as a possibility for effects type of sounds or leads. Let's go to number 15. This one is called Fembox. So this one, um, I guess it's referencing female vocals, I'm assuming. Um, it doesn't really sound like female vocals to me. But maybe, yeah, maybe with just the, the right uh, filtering, that is what the intended use on that is. Um, I'd mark down maybe for plucks or a layering with lead tones on that one. All right, number 16 is called Big Step. Uh, let's see. 16, actually, this one's mis incorrect in the editor. This is not Big Step. 16 is called Fat Saw. So here's another one where we have this wave folding or wave dividing going on, uh, but it's just based with a uh, sawtooth. Um, so this one actually probably has a lot of different uses. You could use this for uh, leads, bases, plucks, uh, various different things I could see using this for, um, or layering with other sawtooth oscillators. You could create your own sort of uh, custom super saw type stuff with that. Uh, next up, we've got number 17. This one's called Rezo Rez. So this one at the lower values of shape mod has some more rounded uh, sounding tones. Uh, then it goes through some thinner type of uh, buzzy sounds. And then in the upper values, it gets really buzzy, resonant, and metallic. So there's probably a lot of different uses for uh, this wavetable um, if you just dial in the shape mod in certain areas. Um, my initial thoughts, I had marked down possibility for bells, plucks, uh, special effects, or percussive sounds. All right, next up, number 18. This one is not bell tree. This is called uh, low lin is the actual name in the device. <laughs> So this one is another one where there it seems like there's uh, multiple sort of keyframes in here of uh, completely different sounds. Um, there's a lot of uh, resonant squealy type sounds in there, a lot of fizzy tones and digital nose type uh, noise type tones in there. Uh, I'd marked down a possibility for percussive tones. Definitely, you can get hi hats and uh, other percussive sounds out of that. 
uh, special effects. Uh, and I'm sure you could layer this with uh, a lot into a lot of different uh, other sounds. Let's go to number 19. Uh, this one's called uh, Z Zippers. pretty wide range of tones as well. It starts off a little more mellow and gets very aggressive toward the top. Um, if you were uh, doing some LFO or uh, envelope on that, uh, you'd get some pretty cool tones out of that, I think. Uh, so this one I'd marked down possibility for bass tones, leads, or special effects tones. Next up is number 20. This one's called Multiverse. <laughs> So as you can hear there, there's a lot of uh, metallic type sounds in there. Um, if you stop the shape mod at various areas, there's some really good uh, organ type of sounds in there and like clavinet type sounds that I found. Um, and then in between those uh, sort of organ and clavi sounds um, and other different tones in there, there's more of these uh, squealing type of high pitch transitions in there. Uh, so I'd marked on as possibly good for uh, pads, special effects, organs, clavies, bells. Um, I could see this one being uh, really cool for pad type of sounds uh, where you swing through slowly the shape mod um, with some uh, filtering on it and you get a lot of interesting tones in there. Sort of sounds like Alien Contact. So that was Multiverse. Next up is number 21. It's, this one's called Pot Gong. So this one again has a lot of good metallic uh, bell type tones and uh, some bassy tones in there. Uh, my thoughts on this side marked down good for percussive sounds, bells, plucks, and basses. Number 22 is called Old Bell. So this one has a similar type of thing where you've got the wave folding or dividing going on, but uh, it's going in reverse uh, order. So at zero shape mod, you've got the complex uh, multi-sign high pitch sound. And then it unfolds itself to a, a sort of a sine wave here. Uh, so this one I'd marked down as possibility for uh, bells and pluck sounds, percussive sounds, and bass type of tones. Number 23 is called Digiwave. So you got a lot of buzzy, sort of distorted uh, sounds in there. Uh, it seems like it's a combination of saw and uh, pulse. Uh, oscillators. Uh, there's some resonant squeal stuff there and a lot of belly metallic type sounds in there as well. Uh, so I'd marked uh, this down as uh, good for special effects type sounds, uh, leads. Um, there were sort of some vocal formant sounds in there too, some more aggressive vocal formant sounds. <laughs> Well, maybe not so much vocal sounds, but uh, yeah, that one could probably be used in a variety of different circumstances. Let's see, number 24 is called X-Former. So this one starts out like a sign and then goes through uh, some metallic sounds, sort of metallic formant type sounds. Uh, I marked down this one possibly for leads, plucks, or percussive sounds. Number 25 is called 16 Signs. So this one uh, has another wave folding dividing type of algorithm going on here. Um, 
it, this one is actually pretty similar to the old bill, number 22, um, except it's going the opposite direction uh, for the shape mod, uh, for the folding or unfolding of it. Uh, so this one I'd mark down as possibly for bells, plucks, or percussion type sounds. Number 26 is called noisy. So there you've got a lot of ring mod type sounds, buzzy distortion sounds, and uh, bell, metallic bell type sounds. So uh, yeah, percussion, metallic sounds, plucks, leads possibly. Number 27 is called static. That one is super aggressive and harsh. Um, again, using this sort of wave folding or dividing. Um, this one possibly be good for leads, special effects, uh, or percussive sounds uh, with appropriate envelopes, snappy envelopes on it. This next one, number 28, is called Sign Powers. So this one, uh, to me, it sort of goes through three uh, different areas in the shape mod. The, at the beginning, you've got a sort of thin, resonant sound. As you get toward the uh, middle of the shape mod, it's more of a mellow, smooth type of sound. And then as you get up toward the high shape mod, it's very buzzy, pulse type of sound. Uh, so this one, probably many different uses for this one. Um, I'd mark down good for leads, basses, effects, or possibly pad type sounds. Number 29 is called Wolfgang. So this one starts out as a sine wave. Uh, it folds into a sort of multi-sign uh, organ type tone. Uh, I definitely found there were a lot of good organ type tones uh, if you just fine tune the shape mod on this one. Um, and then some very aggressive, harsh pulse type of tones up toward the top of the shape mod on this one. Uh, I'd marked on bass, organs, leads, and pads for that one. Number 30 is called DX. <laughs> That's another super harsh, uh, aggressive sort of tone. Um, uh, all of these, of course, you would be filtering these down. Uh, you, they wouldn't be so harsh in most circumstances, but I'm just doing them with the filter wide open so you can get a, a sense for the raw tones here. Uh, but that one, uh, DX, yeah, super aggressive one, probably good for lead tones, special effects, percussive tones. All right, number 31 is called, uh, this is incorrect in the editor, this is not Resoform, it's called Smoothie. This is one of the more mellow wavetable uh, wave tables in here. Um, it's got some more formant tones in there that I could hear. Uh, you could use for vocal type sounds. Um, I'd also marked bass, leads, or pads being a possibility. And the final one here is called Ringy Mod. So that one obviously has um, some pretty strong ring mod type tones to it um, and that unfolding of the uh, wave type of sound. Uh, this one probably be good for leads, organ type tones, bells, percussive, or plucks. Uh, so that gives a basic overview of uh, the third oscillator in the Pro 3. Uh, it goes through the uh, virtual analog and uh, sine and super saw, and then the 32 wave tables. Um, the, you know, the two VCOs are probably going to be the core of your sound the majority of the time on this, uh, but it is nice that they added this uh, third digital wavetable and uh, the super saw and all this other stuff in here. Uh, it really opens up the sound design possibilities for this unit, unit um, and especially if you want to just layer uh, some of these sounds on top of the, uh, the analog core of these two oscillators, uh, you can get a huge range of tones out of the Pro 3. Um, I, I've been have I've had this uh, synth now for about a week and uh, have been having a lot of fun with it. It's, it's a super flexible synth. Um, anyway, um, let me know what you think uh, if you have any questions um, or if you have other thoughts for how you would use some of these uh, 
wave tables. Uh, these were just my initial thoughts as to uh, what I might do with them for uh, sound design purposes. All right, well, I'll uh, wrap the video up at this point. All right, have a good one.